Over a year ago, I started development on my game, Bobo's Fun Zone, a mascot horror game where you search for your missing daughter in a kids entertainment center. Since then, I've released it on Steam. In this video, I'm going to cover how the game was created, what went well, what didn't, and the lessons learned. So, one day I was browsing the internet and I came across this blog titled Why You Should Make a Horror Game. It gave me some compelling reasons that I hadn't thought of. Mainly, that it's easier to mock out a horror game and sell it to an audience of horror fans. After reading this article, I researched by playing different horror games like Garten of Ban Ban, which I'd never heard of at the time, but was absolutely huge in the mascot horror space, and Poppy Playtime. I had seen this game before, but I had never played it. I thought to myself, I could easily make the next horror mascot game. These games had gone super viral and were played by many people. Poppy Playtime was even built using Unreal Engine, which was what my whole channel was about. Speaking of which, I have made a completely free Unreal Engine beginner course and other Unreal Engine courses which teach you how to make games in Unreal Engine. You can find those in the top link of the description if you're interested in that. I'd also seen other YouTube videos about mascot horror games from channels like Goose Studios and Stop Shot. Both had made viral videos about creating horror games. This also inspired me to make the next big mascot horror game. So, I got to work and was able to make around 70% of the game in just 4 weeks. Once I did, I worked up an announcement trailer and made a devlog on my channel. I thought the devlog would go viral instantly, but it didn't. Maybe it's because my channel wasn't used to that type of content, who knows, but a couple of days later, it eventually caught wind and did blow up, and has become one of the most viewed videos on my channels to this day, garnering hundreds of thousands of views. I set up a Steam page and even a Discord so people interested in the game could chat and talk about it. I had made good progress. But then, after that, I kind of lost motivation, and I didn't even touch the game for months after I made the initial devlog and trailer. I basically had abandoned it. Then, I had an idea to help me finish it. Because I was also working on this channel at the same time, making tutorials and content, I could maybe see if I could get a publisher to help me release the game so it could move along quicker. I was then able to find one which had published similar mascot horror games at the time. They could help me produce content for the game. I reached out to them and we made a deal. This did give me some momentum, since I had to make a playable prototype they could test and play. This pushed me further towards completing the game over the next few weeks, although I kind of lost motivation again after this and I stopped working on it for a couple months. It was then around August and I had realised it had almost been a whole year since I had made my initial devlog video and some people in the comments kept asking me where the game was. So I then decided to dedicate a few weeks to finishing it. I made the complete game, I sent it to my publisher, they did some playtesting and they found some issues with the testers, I quickly fixed them and then the game was ready to be released. We planned to release the game in December of 2024 and that was set. So then the day of launch happened. Initially it launched well, I think on the first day it had mostly positive reviews, then the next day it was mixed, then positive, then mixed again. Eventually it recovered, so let's go over the issues people were having with the game. Some negative reviews of the game were about pricing. One guy said 44 minutes of gameplay for £6, rip off. I couldn't really do anything about this and I thought the game is kind of fairly priced, so I wasn't too concerned. But some negative reviews were because of controls and bugs encountered during the game. These I did want to fix. Here's one of the reviews that kind of summarised some of the issues people were having. While Bobo's Fun Zone offers a thrilling experience, it has room for improvement. Key issues include the lack of mouse sensitivity settings, glitches with movements and doors, and inconsistent flashlight functionality. Also, a lot of reviews seem to mention the torch in my game. So, the way the torch in my game works is it's a wind up flashlight, which you're meant to continuously press to wind up, and when it runs out of battery, it will be turned off, and when you're winding it up, it will also turn off as it's charging. I did put this as an instruction when people got the flashlight, although it did seem like a lot of people thought my torch acted dodgily. Well, this is actually how it was meant to work although I don't know how many people viewed it like this. There was an issue with the mouse sensitivity. I didn't include an option for players to basically change the mouse sensitivity, which is a very common thing most games include. Issues like this were patched, although I did this a couple months later. Better late than never, but ideally I would have patched this straight away. Some people even changed their negative reviews to positive ones after seeing this patch. For the release and marketing of the game, I didn't make the final trailer or 
handle reaching out to um, influencers to play the game. My publisher helped contact some YouTubers and they played it. Some big ones covered it. Like Callius, he has 18.8 million subscribers and the video got 4 million views. And Fusion Z Gamer. Although it was covered by some big YouTubers, I wouldn't say it translated to sales directly, and I think I know why. When big YouTubers play a game, the audience is mainly watching for the YouTuber. They're not really interested in purchasing the game, they're just there for the commentary. Although I do still think it's helpful because it will eventually mean more people know about your game if big people are playing it. Also, another main reason I don't think it took off, like a garden of Ban Ban or probably Playtime, is because I didn't really copy their marketing strategy exactly. I realized with both of those games, they released their games in chapters and the first chapter was free. I think this helped as it initially meant a lot more people can play it and it would help get a lot of attention and build hype towards the second chapter. Whereas I put up a paywall up front, I didn't really want to release this game in chapters, I just wanted to have one game and release it. If you play the game, you even know the way I set up the ending of the game, it's not really possible for there to be a second chapter. I technically could, but it wouldn't make as much sense. If I had done one free chapter and then set up a second paid chapter after I got a bunch of hype, that could have helped even more. Although who knows, that's just a theory. It may have not actually made much of a difference, but it's just something I noticed. So finally, let's go over what I learned. First of all, discipline. Initially, I had made a lot of the game in a short time. Those first four weeks where I was working on it hard. Then I took multiple month long breaks. The way I should have done it, I should have set a goal to have finished the game by a specific date and then just worked on it a bit every day. I kind of view it like the hare and the tortoise. The way I worked on the game was kind of like the hare. I kind of did a lot all at once, then I took a break, then I did a lot all at once again, then I took another break, and so on. The way I should have done it is like the tortoise. Every day I should have just dedicated some time to working on the game and I think eventually the game would have been done quicker because I don't have taken such long breaks. Second of all, I would have actually created a separate YouTube channel for marketing. I posted about this game on my channel here, Unreal Uni. Here I mainly want to talk about Unreal Engine and game development content. Sometimes I do do different types of videos, but I feel this type of content should be on a separate YouTube channel dedicated towards like people who want to buy my game. I attracted a new audience and it kind of mixed things up. I think in the future if I do make another game, I will make a separate YouTube channel and just kind of have devlogs based around the game. I think that would help cultivate the community better and make the content more cleaner on that channel. Speaking of that, I did have a Discord for the game and initially it was quite active, but then I kind of abandoned the Discord because I didn't really want to like have to manage it. If I did cultivate a stronger community via the Discord, that would have helped. Thirdly, I could have doubled down on what worked. I did make one good viral video, but then I didn't try to make any more videos on the game. I could have tried to double down on the success to get more eyeballs on the game before it released, but I just made one. Next, I could have done more playtesting. I'm not really sure how much the game was playtested, I didn't really look into it, but I do feel like I could have taken a more active role and looked more into it, because on launch I did feel like I was missing some settings which should have been there, like there should have been an option to change the mouse sensitivity and things like this. This is just a general tip for if you're making a game, but I heard one of the most effective ways to help increase a game's sales and visibility is by making it available in more than one language. But I wanted to just keep this game simple, I only released it in English, but Steam has a huge international audience. I think if I translated the game into multiple languages, it could have helped with success upon launch. Some people have even asked me for a second chapter of the game, but I don't think I will. Although I do think I may make another full game in the future. We'll see. Overall, I'm glad I made this and I learned a lot. It's taught me some lessons which I've just shared right now. If you are interested in learning how to make games in Unreal Engine, make sure to check out the links in the description of the video. That's all for this one. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.